Happy Halloween everyone! It is the last day of the ink month, so let's do some final ink pieces. I actually found these the other day when I was doing some cleaning. These have just been sitting in a drawer for two years or so. It is feather pens or quill pens and I think the reason to why I never got around to use them is because I don't really know how these feathers were collected but then on the other hand when I was thinking about it I find it more wasteful to not use them I mean I already have them so might as well just appreciate how beautiful they are and look at these very interesting pen nibs but anyway let's have a look and see what we got and what pen I want to work with I haven't really looked at these for two years so I'm very curious. So here we have this one with a black feather. This one actually feels a little cheap to be honest. You can see there is a lot of glue there and there isn't really any weight to it. The nib looks pretty nice though. And in the box as I mentioned before we got these very interesting nibs and also a little ink bottle. I will probably not use all of them but we might as well look at them and appreciate them. Ooh. Oh, this one looks like it came from a big bird. It is almost like fabric, so gorgeous. And we have a bunch of different nibs and also sealing wax and a stamp. So I think you just melt the wax and then you use the stamp on it to get a seal. Like when you're sealing letters. I don't know, I think it said Colin on this one. And we also got a little bottle of ink. Then we have this one, a very nice gift box packaging. Oh, this one looks quite similar to the other one. But this one actually looks a little nicer to be honest. And we got some ink and this one actually looks like it is blue. Here we also got these stamps and this one got an A on it for some reason. And some sealing wax in silver this time. Oh, someone made an oopsie. The text is mirrored. And here we also get some different nibs. We also get this little container probably to keep the nibs in, maybe. And then we have the last one. Oh, this one looks fancy. This one got this very interesting and nice design. It also got a little cap to protect the nib. And we also have some different nibs and golden sealing wax and a stamp. And it looks like there is some kind of writing, but I can't really see what it is. Maybe I can use my kneaded eraser to get a... Um, I have no idea what it's supposed to say, but yeah. This is definitely my favorite because it is so fancy, but I also really liked this one in all its simplicity, but what I really like is the nibs. I wonder if I can use these nibs with this one. Oops. Wow, the whole thing came off. <laughs> kind of works. It isn't all the way in there, but feels like it is stuck. But yeah, anyway, let's try to make some art with this fancy pen. So I started with trying out some of the nibs. I actually really like the one that came attached to the pen. It has like a little rounded ball shape on the tip, which makes it very smooth and nice to draw with. It doesn't stab the paper as some of the pointier nibs tend to do. I also tried some of the fancier nibs that came in one of the other boxes, and I'm sure there is a difference between them, but to me it wasn't that noticeable to be honest. I found I found this nib very interesting though, either it is a hand pointing or the pen is now giving me the finger, it is definitely a hand anyway. I also had to try out the wax 
seal thing. I guess it works like a candle. I lit the wick and let the wax drip on the paper. I'm not sure if I did it the right way though, probably not, because it was a very slow process and I got impatient. When I've seen people use these kinds of wax seals in movies and such, they usually take the seal and hold it over a candle and let it melt and then they mush the whole thing on the paper, but since there is a wick in this, I don't know if that would work, but anyway. But it does definitely work. Also, I think the stamp might say good luck, perhaps. That's an odd thing to stamp, but anyway. I wanted to draw something with nature and you know in a forest when you look closer at the ground or at a tree stump it almost looks like there is a different world down in the moss and I like to imagine the little creatures living there so that is what inspired this piece. I first thought I would use one of the two inks that I tried out before either the pilot ink or the one that came in one of the pen boxes but both of these inks they bled with water and since I wanted to use ink wash for these pieces non waterproof ink is a no no because it will only smudge the line art. The only permanent black ink that I have is India ink but it is very thick and it doesn't work that well with dip pens, not this brand anyway. But I tried to add a tiny amount of water to it to make it more fluid and that actually worked really well. It was a little hard to dip in in the shallow mixing cup but I tilted it slightly by putting a pencil under it so it all worked out perfectly. I did all the line work using the default nib, so to speak, the one with a rounded ball tip, and I'm sure there is a name for it, but I am kind of a beginner with dip pens. I really like how smooth it was to work with, it didn't get stuck on the paper or anything as the more pointy nibs tend to do. And that is what made me a little frustrated when I first started using dip pens because first I had this pointy sharp nib that stabbed the paper and all of these little paper fibers came loose and stuck to the nib. Second, I used India ink, which was the only ink that I had at that time and at least this brand of India ink, it doesn't work that well with dip pens as I mentioned. So I got really frustrated and then I didn't really want to work with dip pens again unfortunately but it is such a satisfying tool to work with when you get all the components right. One thing that you really have to focus on though is to keep your hand away from the line art. The ink applies quite thickly so it takes a little time for it to dry so I had to take smaller breaks and let the ink dry in between before I could go back and add some details. Luckily enough I ended up with only a tiny tiny smudge which I could just paint over later. But yeah I love how the line work turned out, it was a little nerve-wracking that I would just mess everything up, but it was also a lot of fun. And then I mixed the ink with water to create an ink wash and added the background and a little bit of shading. I really love this process and this medium, the look of the ink wash is so pretty. I really should use it more often, as I say about a bunch of different mediums, but ink really is a comfort art medium to me, I always enjoy it. But yeah, I really love how this piece turned out, I got to draw a cat creature and mushrooms and a crescent moon of course. I don't know if I already thought about this but cats and mushrooms would be a really fun coloring book for me at least. Anyway here it is, I hope you like it. And for this next piece I wanted to draw a witch because it is Halloween, 
honestly I can draw witches all year around and here you can really see the process of refining a sketch it is fun to see the different stages now thinking of it Halloween almost didn't exist here when I was little but we used to dress up as witches for Easter instead I wonder if that is a Swedish thing it probably is also let me know how you will be celebrating or spending Halloween this year if you are at all we will probably just stay at home, I mean, what else, with a few spooky movies. And me and my boyfriend, we actually met at Halloween 12 years ago, so we will also be celebrating that, I suppose. Anyway, I want to make it a little more interesting, or different at least, so I made a pumpkin witch. It is basically a witch with a pumpkin as a head. I actually really like this idea, the only thing that I kind of regret is not adding more details. It is a pumpkin, so I could have added vines and leaves, maybe wrapped around the hat, the bat hat. So that is something that I would have done differently. And I think it turned out a little too simple for being me. Not that my art is very advanced or anything, but I think since the original sketch was so small, when making it bigger, it looks less detailed, I suppose, but it is still cute though. So I am basically doing the same thing as before, drawing the line art, watching my hands so I don't smudge the line art. Also something completely different, I am so excited about all the positive feedback for my last video, the studio vlog. I am so happy that you guys enjoyed it, it may not have generated a lot of views, but I feel like the ones that actually watched it really liked it, so I will definitely make more of them. I have a lot of work to do for my Etsy shop, a lot of store prep, and I feel like that would be the perfect thing to vlog about. And as I mentioned in the vlog, it was very nice to do something else for a week than just focusing on an art video. I was still making a video, but I could focus on a bunch of other things that I needed to do instead. I will have to solve the audio situation though, because the iPhone microphone is crap, but I have been looking for a better vlog camera. I need to replace the phone as a side view camera anyway for my art videos. You may have noticed these glitches in the phone camera footage sometimes, and it is very annoying. But yeah, you can definitely expect more studio vlogs mixed in with a regular art video so don't worry I will still be making the art videos but in that way I can actually take a week off so to speak but I will still have a video to show you guys. Also, you may have noticed her skeleton hand, and it is nowhere near anatomically correct, but it is in a cartoony style, so I think I can get away with that. Speaking of hands, while the nib of the feather pen is very nice and smooth to draw with, the barrel or the handle or whatever you could call it of the pen wasn't that comfortable to hold. It is covered with all of these tiny little decorations. It makes it very uneven and a little sharp and pointy to hold. But to be fair, I think this feather pen is mainly for decorations and maybe shorter writing sessions and maybe not so much for two hours of art with a firm grip, but it was still very fun to use. I felt very fancy drawing with this fancy feather pen. I will probably keep it out somewhere as decoration if I can find a holder for it. I'm adding ink wash to this piece too, and I wanted her hair to be black, but I didn't really think it through, and I made the inside of the hat black as well, and then everything would just have been this solid black. And that can be a little tricky when working with one tone only, adding different values that don't blend into each other. I think it turned out so cute, let me know what you think. I had a lot of fun working with this dip pen, it may sound silly, but I think the look of this feather pen added to the whole experience and it was overall a fun little drawing session. Thank you so much for watching, feel free to check out my Redbubble store where these pieces will be up as art prints and other things, link is in the description box below along with a 15% discount code. 
road. Also, don't forget to subscribe to my channel if you haven't already, and I hope I will see you next time. Keep drawing my happy cats! Bye!